Hey guys, Jonah here with another beer review and um, I'm trying to use up my old stock. As you well know if you're a, a viewer to this channel for a while. Um, so I'm doing another one from the Beer on Trend um, month from Beer 52. And for a change, the magazine actually has an article which I've just been reading about the beer that we're drinking today. That one, Regenerator. Uh, which is Gypsy Hill versus Wild Farm. Really, really interesting article for many reasons. The only weird thing is it doesn't have the tasting notes in here, which was always my favourite. And if you're going to feature the, um, the brewery in an article, why not put the tasting notes in the article? Eh? Beer 52? You know it makes sense when you listen to your loving Uncle Jono. Uh, anyway, here is the beer itself. Uh, and like I say, it's a combination. Whoops. If it will focus, hocus pocus, focus. There we go. Gypsy Hill and Wild Farmed. And I think this dude here on the, uh, on the label is the guy from Wild Farm because he's obviously... Well, he's in a wild farmed barley field, which looks pretty cool. But this dude is one of the guys from Groove Armada, the uh, the sort of 90s techno kind of um, music machine type dudes, which is really cool, actually. I like Groove Armada. In fact, Groove Armada are pretty damn cool. I like them. Um, go If you don't know who they are, go and check them out. But wait until the end of this video first. Um, Let's see if it will tell us some information. Um, so basically, there we go. So that is Andy, that that chap there, um, is actually Wild Farm. In fact, his name is Andy Cato. And uh, one of my best friends is, is called Cato. So maybe there's some relation there. It's a Scottish name from what I believe. Um, and what it is, is they have contributed... Um, Back on me, please. Thank you. Focus on my lovely visage. They've contributed wild barley uh, to this beer, to the malt bill from this beer. And from what I understand, it's purely wild farmed barley, which is kind of cool. Anyway, um, some more information there in the big font in the middle. So it's a 330 can, 4% ABV, uh, ABV even, uh, brewed with more, never less. And there we go. So we've got barley, yeast, uh, water. Doesn't say it's got hops in there, but I'm sure it should have hops in. Um, may include traces of oats and wheat. Well, we like to see that. And uh, Gypsy Hill are obviously South London, South East, in it. Um, let's see if we can read this. So uh, Regenerator is second collaboration with Wild Farmed. This is a golden ale brewed with an experimental new process uh, for, bio, uh, for barley from uh, Wild Farms Biodiverse Farms. Um, each can's carbon uh, footprint has been reduced by two thirds, which is cool. Um, I believe that this lovely farm that Andy is standing in is in France, and he's also won an award according to the um, the article that I've just read, he's actually won an award for biodiversity in France. And you know how difficult it is to uh, to please the French. What's that little thing down there? Oh, it says South London. South London, in it. Well, no London, mate. And it's even got a black top. Fantastic. So I'm going to hold up this beer and you can have a look while I read um, some stuff on the Beer 52 website. So obviously the beer is Regenerator. It's a golden ale. The hops here are Mosaic, Montueca, uh, Equinot and Citra. Um, and it says uh, aroma is gentle citrus and floral, uh, multi sweetness um, with a lingering sweet finish. For me, a golden ale should be a stronger beer it should be at least five percent maybe stronger because this beer is something you should be having in the summertime um it's not an ipa 
it's a, a traditional British style beer. Um, but um, they're usually heavily hopped, um, so they're quite bitter. Um, so I don't know about all these kind of fluffy, mellow, um, yeah, New World hops, shall we say. Citra should be all right, but uh, is this really a golden ale or not? That is the question. Does it matter, dear viewer? If it's a good beer, does it matter what you call it? Well, not really, but I'm putting my <laughs> beer reviewing cap on. Um, and if you're doing beer judging, uh, you should always judge a beer to the style that it's presented as, um, whether it is or not. So that's purely something for me to think about, really. But I will make a comment on it, especially considering it's a really old school, traditional uh, British style. Um, whereas, I mean, IPA is as well, but IPA, as we well know, has been bastardised into so many things younger people believe it or not think ipa is the only kind of beer out there uh, which is sort of where lager used to be in the 1970s and 1980s um so ipa you're doing a bad thing uh, to beer in my humble opinion but ipas are nice beers <laughs> they can be right let me open this we'll give it a bit of a pressure test I'm not too worried because the um, the can itself was nice and squidgy, and that usually means that the the build up of the uh, carbon dioxide is not massive. But I have had this beer in the uh, well, there you go. See no hint of fizz at all, which is cool. Right, let's go for a, a pour. Look at that, not much, not much head at all. I have to pour some out there just so we've got something to look at and this because of where the uh, the label is is perfect for that and actually should i do that mm, that dude's kind of on his side so no let's do one of these again so spread spread your legs open a bit and uh, a kiss for luck and we're on our way boom but you will have seen that on the front of this video dear viewer right Wow, very interesting. So not much head, a fingernails head, we will call that. Um, on the beers where um, where there is hardly any head, I always say it's a fingernail. And it's a little bit hazy, but you can definitely see things through there. I suspect that this beer was supposed to be clear. And on the nose, it's very odd. I'm getting like barley sugar, bit of sweetness, but not heavily hopped. Maybe a touch, a touch of greenness, but definitely not a hop bomb, hop aroma bomb anyway. Very, very interesting. Anyway, dear viewer, should you wish to, you can help me out here by clicking like to this video. Do it now before you forget and before I start bring, drinking some beer. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. It really does help me out. Leave a comment if you've got any questions. I will do my best to answer them. Chin chin, let's get into this one. Wow. This one is all about the barley, obviously, because they're showcasing the barley, the wild barley. Um, so I would say this is not a traditional golden ale. One, it's not strong enough because the ABV is a bit low. And two, it's not very bitter. It's not very heavily hopped. Um, there are hops in there. There is a bit of bitterness in there. But this is all about the malt um, and it's a bit gnarly it's a bit like a rye beer um, which is kind of cool and if you have a look wow we have got a tide line up here which is a really good sign for me um, it's a mark 
definitely on the glass, but it's a mark of a good beer, in my opinion. Um, there is people will wax lyrical about the head, the protein, the kind of the cream, the cap, whatever it is, and how it attaches to the glass and all of that kind of stuff. Waxing lyrical in poetry, which I wish I could do. Um, I do talk a good talk. Hopefully you all, you all understand that by now, dear viewer. But some people can take it way to the next level. Let's see what we get on the second sip. Oh, I can tell that a lot of the carbon dioxide, because this has been in the, in the fridge for about three or four days, has gone into the beer. Um, so I'm probably going to belch at some point, but I can taste the carbon dioxide in the beer itself. How random is that? You've got to be safe, though. Safe than sorry. Now, look at that. So remnants of the first Tideline, but look how that looks amazing. Some people say that it's like looking at a cloud in the sky and trying to work out what the cloud looks like. Some people do that on, on beer glasses um, and look at the kind of foam, look at the head. Oh, outrageous. Getting a hint of kind of citrusy stuff now, maybe a hint of the kind of greenness, but it's still all about the barley. It's all about that gnarly, bready, biscuity taste, which is really good, actually. But is it a golden ale? Mm, my opinion would say not, but I think it's a really nice, smooth, um, mellow ale. Um, it's not a heavy hitting IPA. It's not a hot bomb. It's not, there's, there's no massive IBUs to this. It's just mellow drinking on the multi bar stool side of things, which is good sometimes. Chin chin. There we go. Some more lacing. Some, yeah, some fantastic lacing, in fact. It said hint could be hint of barley. So that would imply they've not put, uh, sorry, hint of barley. What the hell am I talking about? Hint of oats and wheat. Um, because obviously the field, they're not controlling it um, in normal farming methods. So there might be a bit in there, um, which would aid the head retention, in my opinion. And it would also mean that it was a bit less, um, uh, no, a bit more opaque, a little bit more hazy to it. Um, which is what we saw with this beer. I think this is a really fantastic beer. Different, quite mellow, a little bit lager-like. Um, there's a hint of sourness in there. Uh, nicely balanced sweetness too. Go and find it if you can. Regenerator, uh, Gypsy Hill versus Wild Farm. I think they also have done some other collaborations too. Um, so if you can't find this particular one, there might be another collaboration that you can find. This has been your loving Uncle John, a drinking beer, so you guys don't have to. And hopefully I can pick out good ones like this from the really bad ones. Um, but it was a good one today. So thank you for joining me. Please take care of each other. Take care of yourself too. And while you're there, why not drink some beer? And we'll be back with another review. We'll see.